Well, hello everybody, it's Dr. Karma Bryant, and welcome to my, my TikTok channel. There we go. Um, this is Car Chronicles. Obviously, I'm not sitting in the car at this particular time. I am in the big old state of Texas, where they do everything big. But I just wanted to come in, do a video real quick. By the time I probably post the video, it'll be past Christmas, so I want to wish you a Merry Christmas. Um, but let's go ahead and get started. You ready? Let's do this. Three different types of discards, right? You got the physical discard, you got the mental discard, you have the real and permanent discard. The first one, the physical discard, is when a narcissist gets up and leaves. They discard you. They're finished with you. They go, they've been looking for other supply. They always are on the hunt for supply. So if you don't think that they're on a hunt for supply, they're on a hunt for supply because they need fuel. Now, one thing that I can tell you is that not every narcissist cheats. Not every narcissist cheats. It depends on what position or what role that they're playing or have taken upon themselves. Because you do have people that are in the religious sector, you know, pastors, you know, rabbis, whatever, that are actually narcissists. But because of the culture of where they are at, and they know that it would be a great narcissist injury if they were to get caught or if they were to do something like that, um, they don't do it because it it's not in their heart or they can't do it. Maybe that's the right thing to say, but uh, not all narcissists cheat. They don't. And, and a lot of them are not interested in cheating, which are a lot of the cerebral narcissists. And like I said, cerebral narcissists are not really into cheating, but they do understand the power of sex because a lot of them are not really into sex like that either. They understand the power of sex and how to trauma bond or pull someone into bond. And there are people that are within the religious uh, sector that some of those don't cheat because of the positions that they hold. However, a physical discard is when that narcissist uh, decides to leave. They may leave you know, and discard you for a season. They may leave and discard you because they think they found a source of supply that's more vulnerable, that's more pliable, and they find out that they're not. So that's when they begin to hoover you back. So there's a physical discard. Some of them don't hoover you back because they found a source of supply that is uh, better than you. And when I say better than you, that doesn't make you less than a person. It doesn't mean that you're not a good person. Better than you means that they found a another source of supply that is uh, vulnerable, that is naive, that doesn't know, that are giving them copious amounts of fuel by worshiping the ground that they walk on. This is the best thing since sliced bread. I can't believe he or she would leave. Why would you leave? You know how I can't believe this, you know, so they're getting that. They're getting that. But it's only temporary. And so they'll, they'll still be on the hunt again. Second discard. The mental discard. There are some of you where the narcissist has never actually left the home, but they have mentally discarded you, or they may have mentally discarded you because they're in in uh, where they are connected to a new supply, you know. But the new supply has not proven themselves yet, meaning that they are have a high uh, pain tolerance or haven't proven themselves that they give enough fuel, so the narcissist may still be working on that new supply. But they have mentally discarded you, they just haven't physically left the house. And to mentally discard you, it can also be one of those situations where, you know, we're married, uh, but we're not together, we live in the same home. You guys live in separate um Quarter, not quarters, but separate bedrooms. You're in separate bedrooms. You know, this is a partnership. We, we're never going to divorce. We're going to stay together. You do what you want to do. I'm going to do what I want to do. But we come to an agreement that, you know, you, we're going to take care of the kids together and pay bills together. It's just not affordable or it's not feasible or we made a vow. So we're not going to. And a lot of times it's that narcissist that has you thinking that too. We made a vow. We're going to stay together through better or worse or whatever it is. We're going to stay together. We're not going to break up because this is what we but they have you convinced when what purpose does it serve to live in a house with someone i can understand bills and, and stuff like that but what purpose does it does it uh serve to be in a house with a person that has no respect for you whatsoever have no respect for you could care less about you doesn't the only thing they're getting out of you is a place to stay some money or they may not want to you know what if they don't have a prenup in place you know so they may not want to leave you know, because there's too much, it's entirely too, and it's going to mess up their reputation. A narcissist's reputation get messed up and find out things about that narcissist. Because when you go to court, there are things that you find out about each other. Or other people will find out about you if they're sitting in the courtroom, you know, or if it's a public thing. You know, so there is a physical, I mean, there's a mental dis discard where you're actually in the same house. But that narcissist will pretend like you don't even exist. You don't exist. Don't talk to me. They pretend like you're not there. They even go out and date and have a whole life and come up with a whole nother uh, scenario, a whole nother narrative that people tend to fall for. 
you know, but they're living in the house with you and you guys and, and you're ignored. You know, how painful is that to be in a home with someone where they act like you do not exist, even to a point where they will bring their lovers to the house while you are there. And you have learned just to be quiet and accept it because the hope is the last thing to go. You're hoping maybe they're changing. I'm going to give you this time so that you can hopefully change your mind. I'm going to stick it out, you know, so you can see how much I love you. That's not love. That's that's ignorance because that narcissist is blatantly disrespecting you and dishonoring you in your face. Third discard. Third discard is the permanent discard. And the third discard is the most powerful discard. And that discard is done by you. When you finally make up your mind that I refuse to live like this, when you finally make up your mind, you know, my hope is gone with this individual. It doesn't matter. I'm going to live my best life. I need to heal. I need to get out of this. I deserve better than that. When you put value on yourself, you know, that's when you finally make a discard. And including with that discard includes no contact, gray rocking. For those of you that have children, I don't care what these people are telling you. I don't care when they tell you you need to get out and go. You just need to get out and go. First of all, when you have children and you have been in a marriage, you can't just, excuse me, you can't just get up and go because a narcissist will use that against you in the court of law. Or you will see these amber alerts where they'll say that you kidnapped the children. You know, so they'll use that in court. You, you abandon them, you kidnap the children. And there are times where I've had clients have their children return back to that narcissist because they claimed that the child was kidnapped and they put an Amber Alert out on them. And so don't listen to these people when they're telling you, you are investing, you have children, you're married. Don't just get up and go. What you have to do is you have to get in contact with a domestic violence advocate or a domestic violence program and let them help you because they put it on papers and they understand the law. And so to get the law involved, to get paperwork involved, to help you if you need to relocate, help you if you need to get into a shelter, help you if you need protection, put, to, put, put protective orders in place where they can come and help represent you in a court of law. And normally when they represent, not represent you, the, the advocate doesn't represent you, but they come and support you in the court of law. And normally when the judge sees the advocates, because a lot of the advocates work around the same court, they see the same judges. So usually when that judge sees you know, the advocate sitting in there, you know, and they read the paperwork, they know that this is a person that may be seeking um, assistance or protection from that narcissist. So you, 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 I just like to be private. I don't want everybody in my business. Well, then you'd stay right where you at, but don't you run out that house with those kids in your arms because they will use that against you in the court of law. And then the very thing that you were trying to do to protect your children, to get away from the narcissist, the very thing, it could backfire and that narcissist can get custody of your children because they can say that you kidnapped those kids. And then we're looking at the Amber Alert and it's your car that they're looking for you know, the names of the kids that they're looking for, and it could be you. So don't listen to these people that are telling you, just get out and go. If you have kids, listen to me, disclaimer, if you got children, and you're married, and you're living in a house with them, and even if you have kids, and you may not be married, you make sure that you go and talk to a domestic violence advocate in a domestic violence um, program to make sure that they give you some type of assistance, and, and they'll connect you with legal advice to help you to get out of that situation so it won't be used against you in the court of law. But a permanent discard, and the most powerful discard happens by you. You're the one. You're the one that has to do the discard. You're the one that's going to have to let that hope go that they're never going to change. No, they're going to meet someone else. I know it's the most painful thing in the world to have been with someone for a very long time and to even think or see them with someone else. But the narcissist does not see people as human beings. They don't see you as a person to love. They don't, they don't have uh, the emotional empathy that you have. They, they don't put their feet in anybody's shoes. They have cognitive empathy, meaning that they understand how emotions operate and they know how to manipulate you and they know how to manipulate people because they know if I push this button, this is going to happen. I can get a reaction from you at all times because they understand how that's, that's the cognitive uh, empathy. The emotional empathy means I can step in your shoes, in my mind and in my heart, and I can imagine what it feels like to go through this or this right here, or I can imagine what you're going through. That's the emotional empathy. They, they lack that. They don't have the ability to connect to people, and they don't have the capacity to love the way that a average person, I'm not saying normal because none of us are really normal, but the average person loves. To love an animal, to love your children, to love family, to love your friends and want to see them do well, they are all about themselves. So you got the physical discard, you got the mental discard, and then you have that powerful discard that is conducted by you. That's why I tell you guys, seek therapy to get yourself emotionally prepared for severing those ties, those umbilical cords with that narcissist.